to the music. Let's go. I'm your boy, Ro, managing editor for the new OBB legend. Come check us out if you haven't. And welcome to a student of the game, Foreplay. No, not that kind of foreplay, Canes fans. It's a quick foreplay preview of the next upcoming opponent, who happens to be the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. You should know this guy. This guy's Frank Gore. Frank Gore Jr., son of Hall of Fame Miami Hurricane running back Frank Gore Sr. And a couple things jump out immediately on this play. First thing, you see all the heads turned. Well, they're check with me. The offensive coordinator is looking and surveying the defensive side of the ball to see if he can exploit something. And on this one, I think he sees something. And you're in like a wing T variant. Old school football coaches everywhere. Rejoice. You got to mind your gaps. You got to mind the bubbles this week. And you can't get out leveraged so easily. Right here, this is what I mean by mind your bubble, mind your gap. Because this is a three-tech defensive tackle. This walk-up defensive end is kicked out. Now, you have this nice little crease or bubble. The responsibility here, mind your gap, has to be this Mike linebacker. But what happens here, back to the boundary, is Southern Miss can out-leverage you really quick with numbers when they do this kind of late motion with the B-back. Yeah, I'm talking B-back. I'm talking Paul Johnson language. When you do this, look at the numbers. They can seal off that three-tick. They kick out that defensive end. Frank Gore hits that crease. Good job, good vision. Kind of like his pops on that. And once again, watch this. Hey, a little late kind of shift by the defensive line once they get their set call could maybe disrupt them a little bit more. But I promise you that the Miami Hurricanes are watching when the quarterback comes under center, watching this style of offense, because this screams like Paul Johnson minus the option. But there it is. Great play. First down, move the chains on third and one. On the last clip, they went all Paul Johnson on us. On this clip, they went last week's Miami Hurricanes. What do I mean by that? Ace gun, tight formation, one running back, two tight ends. We know that as the 12th set. Yeah, your Miami Hurricanes ran this style of offense a lot against Bethune-Cookman. So here you go. They're trying to sell a play-action pass off of a zone run, a split zone run. And what do I mean by that? Pay attention to offensive line. They're going to shoot out unilaterally. Now, in the last play, they ran power. On this play, they're running zone. So they're going to mix up their blocking styles. And here's the split zone block coming across the formation with the tight end, but he's going to try to slide underneath that, and then tragedy happens. Yep, nice little tip ball in the air. It's going to go the other way for a pick. So how did Liberty do that? Well, they're going to walk up this cornerback late. This is a cat blitz or a corner blitz, so he's coming. And you got to pay attention to this walk-up defender because this is a nice key against zone. A lot of times teams will do this. As soon as he sees the tackle going away from him, he's going to slide down. There, That's what he did. You see that direction towards the quarterback? So he's immediately you know, into the backfield, closer, straight line, quickest point between point A and point B. So there you go. And I like this. I don't know if this is coaching or instinct, but this was a great play because right here, he's playing the quarterback run. He's playing for destruction. Playing for the run, playing for destruction. So when he gets himself in a prime position, they didn't both go there. Somebody had the wherewithal to go ahead and tip this ball and make the interception because this is a big play behind this. They're not in a prime position, but this was a heady play. Pick. Ball going the other way. Miami's got to watch out for the play-action pass. Maybe off the split zone, and if you know they're play-actioning pass off the split zone, that means they run it. Let's go. Now let's pay attention to the defensive side of the ball for Southern Miss inside the red zone. And one of the first things I like to do is pay attention to the defensive front. In this case, focus in the middle. Defensive tackle, head up over the center. We call that a zero-tech defensive tackle. That typically signals that this is an odd man front. They were in an even man front before, so they're going to mix up their fronts. Most teams do. In this case, Liberty has a great play call. I'm going to make the case that this is an RPO. And a unique one, right side of the line is running pass pro. Left side of the line, they're running and selling a run. So here you go. Right guard, right tackle. Watch them. They're going to come out as pass blockers. There they go. Now, the left guard, left tackle. You see some blocks across the formation. Pin and pull. Here they go. Miami ran a lot of pin and pull RPO last year, too. And the quarterback's vision, and we'll see this again on the replay, the quarterback's vision and anticipation on this throw, great, because he's reading this. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, back is turned. This screams Tyler Van Dyke, by the way. Tyler loves to throw balls when the back is turned. That constitutes open in his mind. Same here with the Liberty QB. Hey, took a shot on that too. Show some toughness. 
great ball placement. I don't say bang for the other teams. Again, zero tech defensive tackle, odd man front, but they get a one-on-one matchup and they exploit it by hitting the slot fade. University of Miami can do exactly the same thing. Get the one-on-one matchups, especially from the slot. You have Xavier Restrepo win this matchup. Nice little RPO here too. Touchdown. And this is going to be the last clip of the evening for this student of the game foreplay edition. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Liberty comes out ace gun three by one look. Southern Miss in an even man front now. And off the rip, I notice a lot of cushion for these number two and three wide receivers on third and two. Sometimes you just got to take what the defense gives you. Ah, they're baiting a little bit. This guy's going to drop off into the flats. But there's a combination of things that allows this play from working for you to now you got to work harder and go into a scramble drill. And what do I mean? You ask the quarterback to go ahead and do a play action pass. There it is. Tight end is already stopping, so he's not at the apex of his drop there. You want this ball delivered. Now, it's an easy first down, but you had him carry out that play fake. We call that quarterback drop to wide receiver route relationship. You got to be in tune, lockstep and key. When I'm here at the apex of my drop, this ball should be delivered. Easy pitch and catch there. Now, the other thing that aids against the quarterback here, instead of taking what's easy here, he's got his head down. He's looking at the pressure coming down Main Street. So now he's got to turn into an athlete. And when he turns into an athlete, whoop, whoop, then delivers a ball. All right. Now, that's one of those things. Yes, it ends up being a touchdown. Great play. Wow play. They had something simple earlier if they decided to take it. University of Miami, they got a formidable challenge this week. Team's going to go ahead defensively. They're going to mix up fronts offensively. You saw a couple plays to kind of give you a little preview of what they like to do. I still think the University of Miami Hurricanes win big in this one. I'm your boy, Roe, managing editor. Stay dangerous, my friends. <laughs>